Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and welcome to the second episode of our look at the debate techniques of Nathan Oakley and the Flat Earth Debate Team. Today, we're going to have a look and see how he misrepresents actual scientific principles and tries to kind of mold them to his argument for the Flat Earth. So let's cue up the music and get going. So I you were saying what? what I was saying that? like, no, hold on. The ballers, or I'm sorry, the discers at the time, the, the flat earthers were arguing, oh, the sun is going over the earth. It's going into the distance, see? And then I was like, no, no, it's not changing angular size because I think it's not a physical object in a literal position anywhere. And everybody was like, what? Why are you helping the ballers? No, we have to imagine how it's going into the distance over the disc. <laughs> yeah. It now, this goes right along with Nathan's strategy, and that is do not make a claim that is subject to attack. So what Arwen is saying is that back when the disc earthers, as he called them, were trying to maintain that the sun was small and local and revolving around near the surface of that disc, that could be attacked with facts. So Nathan is switching over to, we don't know what the sun is, we don't know what the shape of the earth is, we don't know what we're seeing when we look at the sun, therefore, who knows what the angular size would be because we can't even measure that. And then Arwen pipes in and says, well, it's a hologram anyhow, which is actually kind of dangerous because you can test for a hologram. You can't test for ignorance because ignorance itself is self-evident. And that is the position that Nathan is taking. He is professing ignorance that he doesn't know what the sun is. He doesn't know what the angular size is. He doesn't know what the movement is or is caused by. Therefore, he can't be challenged on any of it because he simply doesn't know. And the second part of that, of course, is he doesn't want to learn anything about it because it suits his narrative to not know what the sun is, just as it suits his narrative to not have an actual model of the flat earth that is testable. So, Listen, no when they say to you that the sun is not changing angular size, okay, even though this claim doesn't mean anything, and what Nathan said to you is the most relevant thing you could have heard about it, but what's important to know is their claim is actually incorrect. You can get Wolfie's 6020's video of the sun with his solar filter, and the sun actually does change size, angular size, as it moves towards the horizon. If you go to a channel called zetetism.com, I think his name it, on YouTube, he actually done a video on it, it's only a four or five minute video. So the claim that the sun is not changing angular size is not correct, even with a solar filter. That's just rubbish they keep pump, pumping out there. The same way as they pump out other rubbish. It doesn't matter if it does or doesn't. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is it actually doesn't. So their claim is incorrect. So no, if you no, go no. to zetetism.com. Z- oh, Brian, Brian. Okay, you get so this from I... me every time. I'm really sorry to do this to you, Brian. But that's just what they want. They want you to argue about whether or not the claim is correct. Because every time you are arguing about this claim. You're opening the floodgates to them to beg the question about what a sphere Earth does and assert, with the begging the question fallacy, how the sphere Earth operates, whilst defending your claim that it does or doesn't change in not actual size throughout the day as it moves from its not actual position. So the idea is, get whoever you're opposing, us, the Flat Earthers, we're in the opposition position when this claim is made or this question is posed, to discuss the whys and wherefores of the claim because that claim isn't the point in the argument. The point in the argument is to argue Earth, sphere, and a vacuum. And they'll be begging that question the entire time you're having that argument. Now, I think that was a very telling exchange. Now, now Brian's logic came out and tried to actually discuss the facts of the angular size of the sun. And Nathan was very quick to jump on him and shut him down by saying, you don't acknowledge their evidence you argue that their evidence is meaningless because the thing that they're measuring doesn't exist. Again, because you can debate the meaning of evidence, but you can't debate ignorance because it's self-evident. And anything you claim based on that ignorance 
is not open to being countered. And that's the position that Nathan wants to be in. He doesn't want to make any claims about the flat earth that can be challenged. All he wants to do is try and raise doubt about the validity of the globe earth and then claim that since he's raised doubt about the validity of the globe earth, the flat earth must be true. Not that he's claiming the earth is flat and he doesn't have a model and he doesn't have any idea what the sun and the moon are. I understand that, Nathan, and you're, I understand that, and you're correct. And I wouldn't go and get the video myself. I'm just saying to Brian, if they keep on throwing this at him, okay, that he, they, he can actually get that video and put, just put a spanner in the works because their claim is still incorrect. Now, I wouldn't argue for it that way, but their claim is still incorrect because it does change angular size. Okay. Let's try one more attempt. Et Voss effect, right? So you have an affirming the consequent. If Earth is a sphere, then you will observe the Et Voss effect. We observe the Earth first effect, therefore the Earth's a sphere. Now this is another technique that Nathan likes to use. He will take something that sounds scientific, like the Oetvos effect. Now to summarize what the Oetvos effect is, if an aircraft is stationary and parked on the Earth, there is a certain amount of centrifugal force due to the rotation of the Earth acting on that aircraft and objects of a known mass will have a certain amount of weight, which is mass times the acceleration of gravity. If you take those scales and that known mass in that aircraft and start flying at high speed from west to east, you will be increasing the amount of centrifugal force acting on that mass, and it will weigh less when measured on the same scales. If you land and then turn around and fly from east to west, you are flying against the rotation of the Earth, and as a result, there will be less centrifugal force acting on that reference mass and opposing gravity. Therefore, when you put that mass on the same set of scales, it will appear to actually weigh more. So not only does Nathan not state the Oetvos effect correctly, he also fails to realize that if the Earth was flat and stationary, there would be no weight change going from east to west or west to east because there would be no centrifugal force involved. But what he wants to do is he wants to make the argument about the shape of the Earth rather than the rotation of the Earth and centrifugal force based on direction of flight, which is what the Oetvos effect actually is. Now, the idea behind that affirming the consequent is to argue about the Q statement, to argue about Etvos effect, how it functions, what it does, whether, it, whether it's legitimate or not. Because the whole time you're arguing about the Q statement, the if P statement is prevalent in the argument arena. That's my point. And I, you could say, no, the, the assertion of Etvos effect is incorrect. This doesn't happen. If you move, you don't see the difference in weight. The calibration of the scales, blah, blah, blah. Irrelevant. The whole point of the structure of the argument is to get you to beg the question of P. If the Earth is a sphere, we will observe Etvos effect. Did you notice how he did that? He's trying to revert it to some sort of a logical argument so he can employ a logical fallacy while misstating the actual effect. Well, Nathan, I have news for you. Never in the history of science has a scientific theory, measurement, or law been overturned because somebody shouted out logical fallacy. In science, you need actual evidence. We do have evidence because we have measured known masses on the same scale in aircraft moving both west to east and east to west, there is indeed a change in the weight of those objects. And that weight change can be predicted by our understanding of the Earth's gravity and centrifugal force. Now the question becomes is, we can predict that based on our model of a spherical Earth. And when we test that prediction, it is confirmed. Can you do that on your flat and stationary Earth? The answer is no. You do not have any predictive ability with a flat Earth. We have an enormous amount of predictive ability on a rotating spherical Earth. 
in orbit around the sun. Well, thank you very much for stopping by, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. In our final episode, we'll see how these techniques that Nathan Oakley pioneered are being used by other Flat Earth debaters. So, this is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Remember to hit that like and subscribe. We have a Patreon channel memberships and a brand new channel store. So check those out, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.